In today's video, we're going to be discussing about what this trade, you know, pathway is all about, how you can actually get started with it. We're going to touch on the eligibility criteria. We're going to talk that's actually involved in this particular program. So this is something you want to watch to the very end. So first of all, it's good to know that there are three immigration programs that is being managed by the Express Entry System. The first is the Canadian Experience Class, and this is solely for skilled workers who have Canadian experience in Canada. The second on my list is the Federal Skilled Worker Program. This is one of the most popular programs as this program is majorly for skilled workers with foreign experience. So for this particular program, you must meet the educational and eligibility criteria for you to be successful in your application. And the third one is the Federal Skilled Trade Program. This particular program is solely for skilled workers who qualify in a particular trade. So to qualify for this program, you must meet either of these two requirements. The first requirement is if you can get a job offer in Canada, all well and good. And the second requirement is if you don't have a job offer, then you must have a certificate of qualifications. So let's jump right into the eligibility requirement for this particular program, which is the Federal Skill Trade Program. So for the Federal Skill Trade Program, there are quite a number of eligibility requirements, but I'm just going to be discussing with you some that I think is very important. And in case you don't have it right now, you can go ahead to start the preparation in getting all of this. I'm going to be sharing with you. I had recently done a video on documentations that you need to have, especially if you intend to travel abroad in 2023. If you haven't seen that video, please, please, and please go on there and watch that video after now, because it's going to help you a whole lot especially if you're looking at immigrating to Canada in 2023. There are just some basic important documentations that you need to have handy so that opportunities like this don't pass you by. But one is that you are required to have a language ability, language ability in your English. So you should be able to read, to write, to listen, and also to speak. And that is where the IELTS exam comes in. I know I've received a lot of questions, people asking me, must I have an IELTS. Well, there are some other programs that actually do not require IELTS. The good news is that as low as a CLB 5, which is your Canadian language benchmark of 5, can actually submit a successful expression of interest. And even there are some provinces here in Canada that only requires a CLB 4. Also, you're required to have at least a minimum of two years experience within a period of five years, which if you actually claim that you are skilled in this particular trade, then you should be able to show proof. So very quickly, I'm going to be listing the occupations that falls under this trade program. This is not just tied to being a tailor or being a baker. There are loads of other occupations that I bet you didn't even know existed. This particular trade covers people that have sheet metal um, experience, iron worker, you also have electricians, you have industrial electricians, you have power system electricians, you have cable television service maintenance technicians, you have plumbers, you have steam fitters, pipe fitters, cabinet makers, okay you also have bricklayers you have concrete finishers you have tile setters roofers glaciers floor covering installers and all of this trade has been segmented into different groups so you also you have the equipment trade you have the maintenance trade you have the construction trade and so on and so forth if you have experience in elevator constructions automotive service technicians motor vehicle body repairers electricians you know railway and yard locomotive engineers crane operators if you know how to operate a crane then i really don't know what you're waiting for you should take advantage of this opportunity water drillers that's water well drillers those guys that we usually hire to drill our well back in niger i'm referring to you guys if you know how to drill you know you know how to drill water well this is also an opportunity for you to take advantage of you also have 
printing press operators the people that actually handle the machinery that is being used for printing you also have other trade related occupations like you know forestry mining and all of this falls under agriculture you also have for production for oil and gas well drillers you know for farmers fish masters fishermen fisherwomen oh yes you heard me right fishermen fisherwomen you have this also you know under this particular program and then you have chef cook we have butchers people that actually butcher meat if you are a butcher then you may want to consider coming in through this pathway you also have bakers and fishmongers and the rest so all of these occupations i've mentioned is something you can easily relate to and i think that is one fascinating thing about canadian immigration because it's open to all all right it's open to doctors it's open to nurses engineers architects you know supply chain professionals project managers business analysts human resources and the likes and also open to those that are skilled in some trade occupations that I have just listed you can find all of these trade occupations on the IRCC website okay and one thing you should be mindful of is the tier system yeah, zero basically is for management occupation those that have experience in advertising and marketing in public relations financial managers they fall under the tier zero i'm just giving an examples okay i'm not giving all of the occupation that falls under these tiers but just giving you an idea of the occupation that may fall under this tier category that i'm mentioning you also have tier two and tier two you have occupations that usually requires a college diploma or an apprenticeship training or two or more years of you know work experience and most of this trade occupation falls under you also have under tier three occupations that usually requires a college diploma or an apprenticeship training or less than two years or more than six months on the job training and you have you know occupations like baker like dental assistant dental laboratory technicians all of this falls under this particular tier um, category tier four basically are occupations that requires just a high school diploma just a high school diploma or several weeks of on the job training so under this particular tier you have the home child providers you have your retail sales pressing visual merchandisers and the likes and then you also have tier five tier five are for occupations that usually need a short-term work demonstration or no formal educations at all yes no formal education at all or at least a short-term work demonstration and the occupation that falls under these categories are occupations like landscapers like ground maintainers laborers delivery service drivers and the likes so for me in my own opinion canada is a land of a lot of opportunities wherever you fall in the hierarchy of occupation there is something for you so yes now you have an idea of what the tier zero to tier five actually entails that's just to give you an idea of what it actually entails and what it's all about now we're going to move over to the educational requirements when it comes to educational requirements there is actually no educational requirement for required for the federal skill trade program but if you want to prove your rank in the express entry pool there are two ways you can actually go about it you know if you went to school in canada you can get some points for a certificate or a diploma or a degree okay from a canadian institution or equivalent when it comes to proof of fund you should be able to show that you have enough money for you and your family to settle in canada you know unless if you are currently able to work legally in canada and you have a valid job offer then that suffice but if you are not in canada and you are applying from outside canada you need to show some form of proof that you have enough money to settle in properly before you get a job or before you get your first paycheck this is just everything in a nutshell and i hope i've been able to answer your questions all right i'll see you on my next one till then stay blessed and have a good one goodbye